Good morning. My name is Mike Zaremski. I'm a member here of the Charles Schwab Futures team. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today on Schwab Coaching. This is our March 21st edition of Spotlight on Futures. Now, this is a very special edition of Spotlight on Futures here. So we're going to continue our series here focusing on the transition of our street smart clients here over to the Thinkorswim platforms there. Now, this is a very big week here for our uh Street Smart Central clients to trade futures here at Schwab because as of the Sunday here, the March 24th, their trading will be switched over to think or swim here. So just wanted to kind of call out here. And today we're going to focus on the think or swim web platform, though, though we have uh, done in the past and we'll be doing in the next few weeks as well to uh, additional uh, presentations on think or swim desktop as well, too. And joining me today, it's education coach Ken Rose. Ken, good morning. Morning, Mike. Uh, great to be here. It looks like the markets had a big day yesterday on the indexes and kind of holding steady here this morning. It'd be great to take a look at the, the web tools we have available to us, as well as maybe take a little bit of a peek over on the desktop software as well and look at some of the unique capabilities we have there. Absolutely right, Ken. It's always good. I think people are always in a good mood that you see a lot of green there on their equity boards here as well for the start of the day here as well, too. We also have a Brent Moores there on chat there. So definitely uh, say hello to Brent there. And if you have any questions there, do type those into the uh, QA uh, window there on your YouTube screen. Uh, we got a lot to cover today, but before we begin, let's bring up some important information here. First, we want to note that any information provided will be for general information purposes only and not be considered individualized recommendations or personalized investment advice. Any expressions of opinion Ken or I make will be subject to change without notice and reacting to shifting market conditions. We may actually look at some charts today as well, too, but we want to note that Schwab is not a recommend use of technical analysis as your sole means of investment research. We'll also be discussing the futures markets today. We do want to note that futures and futures option trading is not suitable for all investors. So if you're interested in opening an account to trade futures with us, we ask that you please read the risk disclosure statement for futures and options. And today I want to start out here by bringing up our Street Smart Central program there and kind of highlight this message that we put up here on the platform there, announcing this big change over there that futures trading is moving over to Thinkorswim this weekend there. And what we included on here is a link here. So if you want to see more webcasts like the ones we have here today, it brings up our calendar here. So you can see any upcoming webcasts, whether it's on the platform or strategies there. We have a lot of presentations each and every day as well, too. So definitely uh, you know, kind of check in here and see what's going on here to learn more about Thinkorswim and some of the uh, great trading tools and features we have available. We also listed here a uh, frequency asked questions page here as well, which I want to kind of highlight here real quick. Kind of going over what we've been hearing from clients uh, about what they want to see or want to learn about on Thinkorswim. So we want to learn stuff, for instance, about you know, how to set up a watch list or you know about symbology or how to place a trade there. We got some of these uh, quick things as well to available here on this page. So I just want to kind of highlight that here on the Street Smart Central platform. You have this tools and access there to be prepared there for the upcoming transition there over this weekend. Now I want to go bring up here our Think or Swim uh, platform here. And I'm going to go into the uh, paper money section here. So let's bring that up here real quick. And uh, what you want to see here, in fact, you could actually access this, this page, the login there from uh, Street Smart Central as well as from Schwab.com as well, too. So there's a lot of ways you can get to this here. And uh, what I want to kind of highlight here and what this platform here is, I think it's a great platform for those who either are maybe new to trading there or maybe intermediate traders there that don't need maybe necessarily all those really powerful tools and features available on a desktop platform, as well as for those who, uh, you know, may not have access to their the laptop at all times or where they have the platform downloaded as well, too. You could access this Think or Swim web platform from any, any computer there that has a browser as well, too. So it's a kind of a handy way there to be able to see your positions there, place trades there, look at charts as well, too, all from any, like I said, any compatible computer there that you could, you know, bring up a web browser there. Now, I want to kind of highlight there. Now, I am, I've been trading on Street Smart Central for futures for many, many years there as well, 
too. So as a new participant also to the Thinkorswim platforms there, I'm going to kind of highlight there some of the things that I like to focus on as well, too. And I'm sure Ken can jump in at any time so about what he hears from clients about what they like about these platforms here. So we're going to start out here on the far left-hand side here. We have kind of four little uh, tabs here as well, too. We're going to focus on the first three here today here. The first one here is, I think, pretty self-explanatory. It's our positions tab here. And what this page shows you is it gives you a little summary of your account balance there. And if you have multiple accounts here, you could just transfer between all accounts. Or if you have different accounts there, it shows your balances for each of those individual accounts as well as your account value there and your various buying powers as well too. You can also see uh, your cash balance, if you're trading day, what your P&L was and your percentage change there. So good information there, kind of get an overview of your account and how it's performing there. Now, I know a lot of clients there on Street Store and Central use watch lists and you know, it's a very valuable tool as well too. Now I've set up a, a little bit of a, a watch list here that shows my current open positions here. But if you wanted to create it, I also have a, a little bit more of an advanced watch list here that I titled Futures here. Now, what we did here is we're allowing our clients here who have a watch list already on Street Smart Central there to be able to download and upload their watch list onto the Thinkorswim desktop platform. And once you do that, it'll transfer over to the platform here like Think or Swim Web as well too. In fact, let me show you here real quickly where you'd find that. Let me go back tab here to Street Smart Central there. And I'm gonna go to the watch list page here. And I'm gonna actually pull up my watch list here on. And what you're gonna focus on here is up on this, uh, for the right hand side here, there's this little little icon here that's got like a little bit of a, almost like a browser bar there and a little arrow there. If you click on that, let me click on that real quick here. It says download this watch list too. Now, one of the options here is to think or swim import format. So you would click on that, you would download. And what that does is going to create an Excel file that you could save on your desktop there, title whatever you wish. And then once that's saved, you can log into the Think or Swim desktop platform there, and it gives you an option there on the watch list uh, little section there as well to to ex I'm sorry import your watch list. You just click on that, you find your file, and then it's going to convert the symbology that we use on Street Smart Central here into the symbology used on Think or Swim, and it'll automatically upload your watch list directly to the platform without you having to type in any additional symbols there. So it's kind of a, a neat way to kind of save you a lot of time here, especially for those who have a very elaborate watch list as well to bring it over very quickly and easily over to think or swim. So I just want to kind of highlight that as well too. Now I do have a watch list already created here. And if I want to add a symbol there, it's pretty simple there. You can just click on this little icon here with a little plus that says symbol there. And let's say I want to add, I don't know, look with the British pound here. We had the Bank of England have an interest rate announcement today. So I want to see how the British pound is doing. So I'm going to type in the symbol and the thinkorswim format, which is the slash. And then the symbol for the British pound is 6B. Now it's going to default directly to the most active month, which is the June contract here. But if you wanted a different month, all you got to do is type in the symbol for that particular month and the last digits of the year. So I'm gonna type in 6B, I'm gonna hit enter. And now I can see this quote here for the June British pound futures there. So pretty easy. Now, if I wanna remove a symbol, that's pretty easy as well too. You can just kind of click on it and you see this little garbage can here, this little trash can here, just click on that and the symbol will be removed. So it's, it's pretty simple there to add and moves watch list. If you want to add a new watch list, plus sign here, new watch list. Let's call it here, uh, toss, think or swim web. And we're going to save it. Now you could add any symbols there by once again, just clicking on the symbol box. So let's add in the micro e mini S and P slash M E S. And let's say crude oil. Yeah. So very simple there as well. Now, on this uh, left-hand rail there, you could have it available if you want to see it there, or if you want to expand your 
right side of your web page, just click on this little arrow here. Brings it back, expands the right hand side. You want to put it back? Just click on the arrow once again. Brings your tab back to you. Very simple as well. Now on this positions page, it, it does exactly what it says here. It shows you any open positions you currently have trading on the platform here. So in my case here, I have a position here in the micro e-mini. I also have a micro gold contract on as well. Now I'm gonna expand this, these little arrows here because this will also show you have any positions related to that contract. So for instance here, I actually also sold a micro option. So it did kind of like a covered call here on my micro futures here. I'm also short a 53.50 call that expires on March 28th. So we'll show you that position. So it kind of groups them together by the contracts that you're trading there. Now I don't have any covered options or any options on this uh, micro gold as well too. So you're not seeing anything there. So yeah, so it shows you all the information here. For instance, the quantity, how many I'm long or short, my profit and loss for the day, my open profit or loss. So that's from the time I had to trade on. So if you had it on for many days, it'll be a different number there as well as your profit and loss year to date for that particular symbol you're looking at. You could also look at it, your, your cost or the amount you paid or amount you're receiving for an option there. Liquidating value, your trade price here, that's the price that you initiate the trade at. The effects on your buying power, and if you have options there, I have some of the Greeks uh, also listed on there as well too. Now, what you're gonna find there when you're looking at any of the Thinkorswim platforms there is when you see this little gear icon, that means that it's usually a case of where you could kind of customize that section there. So I have a list here of the columns that are currently visible on my platform, as well as the choices if I want to add additional ones. And this is available columns section here. So let's say I wanted to add, oh, I don't know, I want to add my uh, margin requirement for all my positions there. I could just click on this little green icon here. You notice that it is now showing on the section where it's visible columns and I close it, I now see the margin requirements for my position listed there as well. Same thing if I run to remove a column, let's say I don't wanna see that, just click on this little icon there, takes it out, boom, gone from that page as well. Very quick and easy, just really one step there. You can customize it however you want. And that's one of the great features here at Thinkorswim as well, too, is the platforms here are very customizable uh, for your traders there. So you can set up your desktops, your, your web pages, however you're comfortable with for your trading abilities. We also want to show on this page any activities that you have done in the account. So for instance, working, this is for working orders. So right now I have a couple working orders here. I have an order here to go for some uh, corn futures here to buy, and I have uh, another order here to buy some micro crude oil as well. So my shows you my working orders there. How many orders were filled this particular trading day? So I had some opening and closing orders here today as well. So it shows the time, the places to trade. It shows the contracts, the quantity. It shows the price they were filled and the status here in this case filled. And if I cancel any orders today, I can see that from the cancel tab here as well too. I had an order here that I canceled here in the micro e-mini status canceled there. So yeah, this is kind of like a good hub there to see how your equity is doing there, how your positions are faring there and what your positions are all from this positions tab here. So Ken, uh, is there anything else uh, that you like that when you talk with clients there as well too and do these courses here? What do they like to see there on the positions page or anything else you want to kind of call out today? Well, you know, uh, look, look at it, Mike. I think you, I think, I think you have a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of great information there. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of gravitate towards the chart because I'm a technician by nature. I'd kind of like to look at the charts and look at some of the studies that are available on the charts there on the, on the web-based version as well. Oh, perfect. Well, let's make that transition over to charts. And we're going to look at a couple of places where you can see charts as well, Ken. I'm going to start out next by going to our trade tab here. And what's kind of nice about the trade tab here is the first thing you want to do here when you're on the trade tab here. In fact, I'm going to expand it a little bit here as well, too, so we can kind of see it a little bit better there. 
Let's type in a symbol there. So uh, those of you uh, on chat there or can want to call out uh, what, what kind of markets are you kind of following here as well, too, that we want to kind of look at here on our platform? Well, you know, right now, the um, the E-minis are, are are moving along nicely. Also, the, if, if you look at the oil future, some some of those have gone up and pulled back, maybe uh, posturing for a potential bounce. You could possibly look at those and, and, and look at those from the standpoint of maybe a contingent order on those. Oh, sure. Well, let's take a look here. Um, let's take a look here at the uh, E-mini to start here. And so we just typed in the symbol and our find a symbol here. So now we have our E-mini posted up as well, too. We can get kind of the details here of this contract here today, showing the taste of volume here. We could see something like, for instance, the margin requirement, <clears throat> the expiration of the contract they're trading. This is the June futures here. 92 days to expiration. We can see what the last trading day is here. The value of the point of a tick in the E-mini, if you're not familiar with it, it's a trades in quarter point increments. And the amount that that quarter point increment is worth, $12.50. Now, we have a couple different things we want to show you here. If you wanted to just place a trade to, let's say, buy it here at the current market here or sell at the current market there, very easy. Big buttons there, big green button a sell button here as well to just kind of buy. So let's take a look and say we wanted to buy it here. We'd buy it. Now we got our order screen here on the bottom there. It says buy one. It's got defaults to a limit order here, but you could change it to market if you wish. You can make a stop, stop limit, trailing stop, whatever you prefer for your strategy there. You can make this as an order that just works for today's trade, or it could be a good till canceled order, which works until the order has been canceled there. Or the contract expires at the market there. So it's really whatever you want to kind of set up as well. So you could also uh, put in a contingent order like uh, Ken was saying there. Let's say we have an order here to buy the mini here. Well, let's say you want to do a contingent order here to let's say sell it here if it goes up a certain amount. Let's say if we bought it here at 31, 14 and a half, let's say we want to sell it here if it goes to let's say, we're going to be a little optimistic here, let's say 53, 50. So we could set up this order here. So it could say, we're gonna, when we place this buy order there, and once that is filled, then we'll have an order here to sell it at that profit target there already working in the market. So let's assume we wanted to do this. We wanna to try to buy it at 53.14 and a half. And if that's filled, sell it at 53.50. So it's a then order there. So if this, then this order. So let's review it here. And I always recommend, especially when you're trying a new platform there, even if you're an experienced trader, review the order, make sure it is doing what you wanna do before you confirm and send it as well to you because there's nothing worse than actually making a mistake, placing an order, then have to trade out of it as well too. And even psychologically, it just may you know, kind of affect your trading as well too. So yeah, definitely recommend, do the review, make sure it's what you want, and then you submit the order to the market here. Now, we are showing that this is a, a paper money account here, which also is a great tool as well, too, especially if you're new to a platform as well, too. Play with the paper money here. Get familiar with how the platform works there. Maybe you're trading a new market there. Good way to kind of, uh, you know, play some trial trades here without putting real money on the line. there. Just get a good feel of how the market trades as well, too. So, yeah, definitely a great tool here, the paper money that's available on the web as well as on the desktop platform as well. All right, so we got our information here. We see that this commission here is going to cost $2.25. It shows what the effect will be on our buying power. Everything looks good. We could hit send, and we have that order now working. And we could see here we actually have a filled order, so we are able to actually buy it. And we could confirm that here by looking at our positions page. So let's go look at our positions. We can now see... We have our E-mini S&P 500 order, long one, entered at the market there, and we can see the trade price here. We actually got it better than a limit there, 53, 10 and a half. So got a, a, a nice fill there from when we looked at it originally. Now, going back to this trade page there, we have another thing that I like to show you here, and this is what we call the ladder here, or it's our active trader tab here, but it's known in the industry here as a ladder there. And what's nice about the ladder there is you can see what we call depth of market. And what depth of market is, it shows you there 
the best bid as well as the best offer there, but it also shows you the resting limit orders there at prices lower than the bid or higher than the offer. So let's say there's about, I think, eight to 10 available on each side of the market there. And what this is a good view of is to see not only what the current liquidity is, the size at the current market there, but what is the uh, liquidity overall in the contract? As you can see here on this uh, E-mini contract here, there are a lot of contracts available all the way out to 10, or eight to 10 increments on each side of the market there. And well, if you're a, a smaller trader, you know, trading one or two lots there, all right, that's some good information to have here. And, you know, there's some, maybe some other reasons why that would be important there, especially if you see what the size of those resting limiters are at certain, let's say, key technical levels on a chart. But let's say you're a larger trader. Let's say you're a trader that it trades, you know, hundreds of S&Ps. Maybe you're a professional trader there as well, too. What this liquidity will show you there is, okay, if I want to buy 100 S&Ps now, I know that I couldn't necessarily get it there if I just put an order in at the market right at the ask there, because there's most cases here, it's less than 100 available there. I need to know what size and how much I may move the market if I'm putting in a large order there as well, too. So this can kind of give you a gauge here to say, okay, in this case here, I'm trading a 100 or 200 contracts there. I don't want to move the market too much against me. I may use a limit order and kind of set a maximum price I'm willing to pay there to get my full order filled and not kind of push the market uh, unfavorably against me by, by kind of absorbing all the liquidity in the market there. So it's just a great kind of tool there to kind of get a vibe of the market. What it also does, let's say you're trading a new market and you want to see what is the general liquidity of the market here. I'm going to show you an example here in a market like, let's say, Palladium. Let's do dash PAM24. Now, I can see the liquidity on a market like Palladium is not quite that as you see in the e mid S&P 500. Notice that a, the bid and offer there are definitely wide. It's almost $2 wide. And even on a $2 wide market, what is the limit orders available? One contract, two contracts, even going out. So if you were trying to move, let's say, 50 palladium there, and you went a market order there, <laughs> you would move the market quite a bit against you there as well, too. So yeah, it's just a good guy to judge the overall liquidity of the market as well. And I know a, a lot of tr experienced traders definitely like the ability there to see this information here and how quickly you could actually kind of place trades on the ladder there for instance. So I'm gonna demonstrate placing an order on the ladder here. Now, I have this on my platform where I try to place an order to buy and join the bid of the market there or sell at the ask. Now you can change those as well too. If you wanna just have it set up so you wanna buy at the market or sell at the market, or if you wanna be, let's say what I call a market taker there, so you could actually have one buy at the ask, sell at the bid. Totally customizable for, for you on this platform there. Over here, you can actually change the quantity. So we're gonna stick with one contract here. And let's say we want to do, we're gonna do the market here. So let's set that up here. And let's say I'm gonna, gonna venture in here to this Palladium market here and I wanna buy one. I can just click on this buy market button. Sets up my screen here. Now let's say I wanna change that to limit order. No problem there. And let's say I wanna try to buy it at 1000. So I'm gonna do a GTC order for that. I could just review it. Everything looks good and confirm and send. Now, once you get more experience or maybe you're an active day trader there and you think that even though that, that verification there, which is good to make sure you don't make a mistake, let's say you wanna put the orders in very quickly there. You could actually click on this auto send button here, click on auto send and then what's, what, let's say you wanna put a limit order in here at 1017 to buy. I could just click on here. Buy one limit, my order is working now. It's, it's in the market. I, there was no verification there as well too. So yeah, definitely a, a feature that's available there if for those who want to really be very active in the market very quickly. So I'm gonna take that off here as well too. Let's say I wanna adjust my price though. I could adjust my price by moving it right on this chart here, moving it up 
and down. So let's say that original limit already had it at a thousand. I would say I want to make it nine seventy nine. Review it. Send it. I just adjusted my price. Let's say I want to change that order I had at ten seventeen. Move that up to let's say ten eighteen. Just adjust it right in the chart there. Review it. Send your order in. Let's say I want to cancel these orders. Just click on this little X box. It's canceled. Click on the X box. Canceled. You're getting your verification right there. Notice how very quick and easy, one click, take an action in the market. This is very important there when markets are moving very quickly as well, too, and you want to adjust your prices back or forth. So, Ken, we also have a chart here next to our screen here as well, too. But I want to go to our charts page here as well, which is a page dedicated to charts. You trade right off the charts here as well. We got our buy and sell buttons here as well, too. But so, Ken, what do you like to show when, when you're just demonstrating charts to our clients? You know, Mike, uh, with regards to charts and also orders, probably probably one of the studies that I like to pull up on a chart is the average true range, because that can be beneficial when you're looking at putting in, a, putting in an order on the underlying security. Along with that, usually a couple of moving average lines. And I'd say the most, the, most, uh, the most often used moving average lines are the 50 and 200. However, if you're a little bit more, more of an active trader, I know a lot of futures traders are, sometimes they will, they, they'll tighten those moving average lines up and go possibly with a 20 and a 50 uh, in, in relationship to that. Well, and you could actually add some like those moving average here by going to our studies tab here. So let's just click on this little studies box here. And you could kind of find some of those studies that uh, Ken was uh, speaking of. And we have some of the popular studies listed here, but we have various categories of studies as well. So you're talking about those moving averages here. So let me click on the moving average here, tab here. Okay, we got that study added here. And now let's take a look here at our moving average. I just clicked it off there as well too. Let's, let's bring this back up as well too. And now let's go to our settings here. Let's take a look here. So we could also add and adjust all the settings you can see here on this chart page as well. So it's just it's a lot of great features as well too. So right up here we have our moving average here on the page here. And let me go back to that moving average here. And let's say we wanted to look at the, the nine was the default here. So I just clicked on that. Now I want to change that there. So let's look at that 20 day moving average that Ken was talking about. Ken, do you like the simple or do you like the exponential? I actually prefer, I actually prefer the uh, simple to the exponential. Right. Perfect. And I know that everybody has preferences for colors there as well, too. And I know on my charts there, when I see a 20-day moving average, I want it in green. So I'm going to pull up green here on my choice here. Close it. And now I have my 20-day moving average here in green right on the chart. Now, we could also, on this chart page, we can bring up that ladder here by clicking on the uh, right rail here, the Active Trader tab. Also, we want to see, maybe just want to see the level two quotes. So you just don't like the ladder there. You still want to see that, that kind of that depth of the market here. And you can still use the buy and sell buttons up on top. And finally, maybe you want to see how is the market performing here as well, too? Are we seeing a lot of buys coming into market, a lot of sells coming into market? You could look at a time and sales page as well, too, and you could see, okay, is the market there? In this case here, we're seeing it in Palladium, very slow market here. Let me turn some like the E-mini back up here so we can see a little more activity here. Kind of demonstrate that for you. And you can see, okay, we're seeing orders there kind of moving up here. We're seeing from 53, 14 and three quarters up to 53, 15. You can see the size of the trade there as well all available here on this page. Now we got about 15 minutes left and we'll open this up time for some questions here at the end, but I wanted to have uh, Ken actually show you a, a really neat tool that's available on the Thinkorswim desktop platform. And Ken is really an expert at that. Well, and that's the Think Scripts uh, program there as well too. So I'm gonna have Ken here kind of share his screen here in just a minute here. And I want to go over what this ThingScript tool is here and how it's a, a really kind of a neat feature available here on Thinkorswim. Ken, take sure, it away. Great, uh, great, great, Mike. So, 
We actually went over this in a session a little bit earlier this week, and a lot of folks a lot of folks expressed some some additional interest in it. So we thought we would review it once once again here today. So basically, they're they're what basically on the on the Thinkorswim desktop software, which is available to you. And I would say it's it's actually a little bit more geared towards replacing Street Smart Edge than the web based version is. There are some very unique tools that are available there that, that you basically won't see anywhere else. And one of those tools is the is to use custom scripts to customize charts, to customize studies, to customize columns, basically to make the platform your own in many in many different ways. And one of the nice things about scripts is you don't need to learn computer programming in you don't need to you don't you don't need to learn computer programming in order to build those, because if you see a script you like or you ha or you can describe a script that you would like, um, an individual can take what they have and share it with you and, and and do that very easily. Let me just show you a couple samples here. So here we have a chart of the uh, E mini right here. This 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 looks to be a six month chart. I'm going to go out a little bit longer in time here. Let's go out a year. And. If, if I wanted to see the notional information on forward slash ES, I could come in here and click on futures here. And here I can see the tick size. I can see the tick value. And then from that, I can, and then from that I can extrapolate and see how much each point is worth. Of course, when you have all these different futures contracts and you have all these different tick sizes and values, that can become a little bit confusing, particularly for someone who's relatively new to futures. So one of the, one, one of the custom things that you can do here, and, and 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 this is and, and this is one that actually was, was was put together a little bit earlier. But let me just pull this up. Let's see. This is an example of a script that you can have that will show up on your charts. And this is called futures label. And by the way, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the scripts. I'm going to describe to you how you can how you can bring them over to your platform, and that's done via links. And what I'll do is following our session today, I'll put all of the links to the scripts I'm going to be discussing here in the YouTube description. So if you look at the bottom of the YouTube window, you'll see a short, you'll see a short description. If you click on more, that'll open up and give you a more detailed description. And in that detailed description, you'll see something like futures label link, market forecast link, and 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 links related to what we're going to be showing here over the, over the next few minutes. But if you'll notice here. In order to bring this up, I went to edit studies and underneath studies, I just started typing in futures. Here's my futures label right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on apply right here. And notice uh, when this is done, now that I'm, what, what I'm looking for slash ES, it gives me the tick size right here on my chart. It gives me the tick value, but it also gives me the point value along with that. Now, as I change to different types of futures contracts, if I come over here to, for, for example, Bitcoin, it gives me the Bitcoin information. It tells me the, the tick size the tick value and the point value to go along with that. And then I'm just going to come over here and hit this one. This is Ether Futures. This gives you the same information here. Here's light, here's light sweet crude oil right there. So we got tick size a penny, tick value 10, and then point value is 1000 right there. So that is basically uh, how these work. Now, um, periodically, there there tends to be a little bit of a glitch here on Schwab.com. I'm not I'm not I'm not seeing it this morning, but you may pull these up uh, periodically, and the very end of the label may be chopped off. Actually, okay, um, that is that's something that that's something that occurs periodically, but it is something that the engineers are aware of, and they're and they're working quickly to fix that. Hopefully, that'll be fixed by the time that you implement the labels here. So this this is just an example of a futures label. Another label that's fairly popular. If I come up here to Studies and come down here to edit studies. This is a comparison label right here. And I'll just describe what this one does here as well. So what this label does, it compares whatever you have up here to the S&P 500. However, you can change what it, what it compares to. This is telling us that for slash CL over the period of the chart, which is one year, one day is up 19.6%. The S&P 500 is up 32.97%. So the performance difference is that crude oil in comparison to the S&P 500 has underperformed by, by about 13.31%. Now, if you're looking at these and saying, okay, well, that's interesting, how can I get these? Well, I can share these with you very easily. To do that, you just come up here to studies, come back over here to edit studies, and where you see these custom, these custom scripts, there's little scrolls, little, there's little, these little scrolls right here. You just click on the scroll like this, 
And then you come up here in the upper right hand corner and click on share. And then you come down here in this box and click on share. And that copies this link into the computer's memory. And that link is what is shared with other people. Now, when someone shares that link with you and you have the link and they, and, 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 and they can send it to you and they can text it to you, they can send it to you. But once you have the link, in order to incorporate it here, you just come up here on the Thinkorswim platform, click on setup and come down here and choose open shared item. And then you just paste the link right here. And then you click on preview. And the preview will give you this area right here. Notice it gives you a place here to name what you're bringing over here. And it's important to name these so that you'll be able to pull them up, okay? So I'm just gonna say, here, be, because I already have this, I'm gonna call this AAA test, actually so that I can go in there and easily delete it if I choose to, okay? But there it is, right there. I've, I've given it a name that I'm gonna go ahead and click on import right here. Now, if I wanna bring that up, let's come back up here to studies and choose edit studies. I'm gonna delete this one that we brought over earlier. And over here under studies, there's I, I, I gave it AA test, so it would just be at the top of the list. If I click on it right here, then I click on add selected right here, and then click on apply. Well, you know what, let me do this because I wanna click on apply here. First, we see that it's gone, okay? Well, it's no longer on there. So to bring it up only under this new name, I can click right here, choose add selected, click on apply, and there, and, and there it's sitting right there, futures tick size. And, if we collapse the left-hand side here, then we get it all on one line, if we would like to have it all on one line. Now, a nice thing about scripts, what we've looked at here is just labels, okay? You can use scripts to modify existing studies. This market forecast study is something that's unique to the Thinkorswim platform by Schwab. You won't find it anywhere else. Now, there's a complete discussion on how to use this, and I'll put a link to a separate webcast that talks about the use of this. But this is the raw form. This is the way that it comes to you. You can use Think Scripts to, to, to make these things a little bit more user friendly. If I come compared to studies, choose edit studies. I'm gonna bring up a different market forecast. Well, it's, I shouldn't really say different. It's the same market forecast, but it is um, enhanced to make it much more user friendly. And we'll bring that over here. I'm gonna take this one off of here for now. I'm gonna click on apply. And if you, if you go in and you learn about how to use the market forecast tool, this is a much more friendly place. Now, in addition to labels and studies, you can also do customized columns. You can also do back testing, which is a great feature on the Thinkorswim desktop platform. In fact, if, if I wanted to back test this market forecast in relationship to um, entries and exits, and you would develop those entries and exits on your own with an understanding of it, because you can trade this in several different timeframes and in different ways. If I want to do if I want to do back tests, I can say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take an entry on here when the intermediate line crosses above here or comes out of here. Come over here, you can grab a spreadsheet and just start entering exits and exits, or you can do it in just a few seconds using the strategy function on the Thinkorswim platform. I'm gonna come up here to studies, edit studies. I'm gonna look under here stud strategies because strategies also use scripting, and I'm gonna start typing in here market forecast. Right here, so this is a now, this is a strategy. I'm gonna click on apply here and say, okay, here. And you can see here, I've got a buy signal here. I've got a sell signal here. I've got a buy signal here. If we go back over a longer period of time, um, let's go out five years. In fact, we'll go a long time. You can see all these different buy signals, sell signals. So rather than go in and individually um, write these down, everything is plotted here for you. Then you can get a report. You can do right click right here. You can choose show, you can choose um, show report right here. And this report will give this to you. And by the way, you can move this over to a spreadsheet. This will show you all your entries and all your exits. You can see this was unprofitable, profitable, profitable, unprofitable. That's gonna be hard to recover from profitable, profitable. And so over on the five years, it looks like overall, we have, we have a loss here of 13,040, which is, which is not unusual at all. So, what, so what, what would you do from there? Well, the nice thing is you can go in and you can change it. You can say, you know what, rather than, rather than enter in um, at a point like this, maybe I wanna enter in when, when we're down here low and you can go in there and you can modify things that way as well, okay? And, and of course, and, and you also have custom columns here, here. You also have custom columns that are available to you. Also with regards to scans, you can come over here and use scans. I do wanna show you one other area though here 
running a little bit short on time, but I want to come over here for just a second and come over here to the Learning Center. I'll include a link to the Learning Center in the notes as well. Here's the Learning Center. This is nice because it's a think manual. It gives you a lot of good information. And over here is ThinkScript. If you do like to program and write those things yourself, you have all the tools here to describe scripting, takes you on a tutorial of how to do those scripts. The nice thing about this is you can take an existing script, maybe you get from someone else, and you can modify it for exactly what you would like to accomplish. So this is a great tool here as well. And, then, and I'll, I will also include a link for that as well in relationship to that. But that's just kind of a quick overview of um, scripts and the customization that's available to you here. I'm just going to pull up one more here because we do have one more minute here. Just to give you an example of a column, I'm going to bring up a script over here and we'll pull up. Um, let's take a look at knives here because this is interesting. I'm going to pull up falling knives. What falling knives is meant to, is, is meant to find is it's meant to identify um, securities in your list that are pulling back for a potential bounce, either from a bullish standpoint or a bearish standpoint. So here's micro crude futures. I'm going to decrease the time frame on our charts here so we can see this to three months. Like so, and I've come down here, click on, notice I click on micro futures. We can see it came up here. There's our falling knife here. Higher high, pulling back, getting ready for bounce. So that's, of course, when you see that, you'll see that. Also down here on gasoline, we have the same type of thing. Pull back and ready, perhaps, posturing for a bounce. We can go down here. Here's another one here, micro 10-year yield futures. Same thing, we came up here, created a higher high, marginally higher high, coming down here and we're bouncing. These are bearish knives right here. So these, this is a situation where the underlying security is in a downtrend, it's recovering and rolling over. So if you're looking at things from a technical analysis standpoint, which is what I do, this is very handy because rather than going through all these charts right here, I can put up a customized study right here and I can go through all the bearish ones here and I could come down here and go through all the bullish ones here. I'll also include a link for this customized column here as well. Just one more final note with regards to scripts. You bring them up uh, using the link one time, okay? And that's it. After you bring them up using the link one time, you've given it a name from that time forward. You always just wanna bring them up by name. If you continue to bring them up by the link, it will clog your system so much. You wanna be a little bit careful about that. And that just, Kind of a quick overview there, Mike, of uh, using scripts here on the Thinkorswim platform. Well, thank you, Ken. I think that was offer. very educational as well, Tim. It also kind of shows you the range of availability, whether you're a novice trader or more advanced trader, with using maybe the Thinkorswim web or the, the more powerful Thinkorswim desktop there. It's all customizable to whatever suits your either your interest or your availability or your time frame or your, your level of knowledge and how much you want to get involved with the markets here as well too. Range of tools available here as well too. That's what's great about the Thinkorswim uh, series of platforms that we also have a mobile platform as well too. Just gives a lot of these cool tools and features as well too. Now, if you want to learn more about the uh, things scripts here, Ken uh, provides a uh, webcast there on things scripts as well to get a more of an advanced, a full 45 minutes uh, learning about this really cool uh, tool available on the Thinkorswim platforms there. Uh, we do have time for a couple questions. And uh, Ken, if you want to, that's somebody asking here on the chat here about, could you show what that general market overview tab is, as well as the flexible grip and the product depth that's on this page here? Let's see. Um, so here is product depth right here. This just gives you Additional, this, this gives you additional information um, with regards to implied volatility and the like. Right here we have a sample for General Electric. Um, to be honest with you, I don't, I, don't, I don't use this too much, but that's product depth. With regards to the overall market, maybe we're referring to this one. Um, let's see, do, 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 do. market watch right here and visualize. So this, this, this may be what we're referring to as far as the overall so market. So kind of like a heat map there, right. Yeah, yeah. So, and and I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if this is what the questions relate to. But this is nice because you can pull up an index like the S and P 500, and the 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 size of the box is telling you the market cap. So Microsoft has a huge market cap. Apple has a huge micro market cap. And then the color of the box: the darker the green it is, the farther it's up today, or the darker the red it is, the farther it is down today. 
just kind of gives you a quick overview of the overall market. And that's the S&P 500. Of course, you can change this if you wanted to, to just take a look at the just just take a look at the Dow, the, the Dow 30 stocks as well. Does does that address the question, Mike? I think it, it did there, Ken. And if not, um, definitely a chat that as well, too. And we'll get to your, your question there. And hopefully it may be clarified a little bit as well, too. And finally, let's end up with one question. We've seen that from a few people there. They saw that you had a white background on your platform there. They want to know, can you change it to any other colors? Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, that's that's that that's that, that's one of the nice things on Thinkorswim platform is you can change your background. You can come up here to setup right here, and you can come down here to application settings, and then right here where you have look and fill, you can come over here, and you can go. You you, you can change your background. I I have here custom light. It's something I put together, and you can you can do a lot of customization not only with regards to the overall background, with but with regards to your headings and those types of things as well. So. I've got custom light here. If I wanted to come over here and go to dark, and click on apply settings, well, then I'm then I'm in dark real real quick. Okay, I'm I'm more I I I kind of prefer the light, but you can easily go and shift between light and dark setting. And then again, that setup application settings, look and feel here, and then come in here. And I'm going to go back to my custom light. And again, you we could we 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 could have an entire session. In fact, you have two or three <laughs> sessions as far as customizing the look of your of your platform here. Well, thank you, Ken. Unfortunately, we're at time, though, but there's some, definitely some good questions there from our viewers there, and I definitely uh, enjoyed their learning more about ThinkScript as well, too, on the Thinkorswim platform there. Now, Ken and all the other education coaches, like I said, they have uh, multiple different webcasts each and every day, so definitely take a look at that schedule there that you have on your, uh, your YouTube channel. Uh, platform there as well too, as well as on schwab.com and uh, Street Smart Central there. You can go look through all of our webcasts each and every day and learn about our series of platform strategies and all the great stuff available here uh, for trading here at Schwab. So once again, we'll be doing more of these uh, presentations here as our traders uh, transition over to the Thinkorswim platforms as well too. And we'll also make recordings of that as of these as well too, so I could Watch them at your leisure and just learn more about the Think or Swim suite of tools here as well, too. So once again, I want to thank uh, Brent Morris for working the chat here, Ken Rose for his uh, great insights as well, too. And I want to thank all our viewers here for joining us today. I want to wish everyone a great trading week and a good transition for our future traders over to Think or Swim over this weekend there. So once again, thanks for joining us today.